Braintree Dems welcome the candidates for Lieutenant Governor to our caucus. Our first candidate is Mayor Kim Driscoll, candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Hi hey everyone, good evening. I'm, I'm Kim Driscoll, as, as Kathy just mentioned. I'm happy to be the mayor of Salem and I'm running to be your next Lieutenant Governor. I thought I would share just a little bit about my background, why I'm running. And it doesn't sound like tonight we have time for Q&A, but I definitely would love to hear your insights. I know Juan, our campaign manager is on. He'll put some information in the chat if you'd like to reach out, would love to connect. Um, thought I would just share a little bit about my background. My dad is a, is a native of Lynn and uh, was a chef in the Navy. Uh, he met my mom when he was in service. She is a native of Trinidad. Um, I was a Navy brat, born in Hawaii, lived in lots of different coasts. I came to Salem to go to college fell in love with the city, fell in love with my husband, Nick. Uh, he is a second generation union bricklayer in local three. We like to say he's putting his political science degree to good use every day on the line. Uh, and together we've raised three children here in Salem, Nick, Eilish and Delaney in a really welcoming and inclusive community. I've worked in local government for just over two decades, working to solve problems of hard working people every single day. Early in my career, I worked for the city of Chelsea as they were coming out of receivership first as their chief legal counsel, and then as their deputy city manager. That really helped um, show me the value of professionalized local government, and most importantly, who pays the price for failures in leadership. Um, seeing a need for action in my own hometown here in Salem, I ran for mayor. Um, and at the time, Salem had some serious fiscal difficulties, felt like we were taking one step forward, two steps back. I'm really proud of the work we've done here to tackle fiscal challenges, improve city services, we operate in a more open and transparent manner. I've been fortunate to be reelected five times. And along the way, we've helped make Salem a hip historic destination, both for visitors and residents who live here. Uh, we've been able to make historic investments in parks and infrastructure and schools, which really um, came about as a result of taking care of business, right? Having balanced budgets, working towards growth, creating jobs, having a local economy that's vibrant, allows you to do the sexy stuff in your community that really make a difference in the quality of life. Mayors like me have been on the front line, not just during this pandemic, but certainly throughout the last couple of years, working on some of the most urgent fights facing our community and our Commonwealth. From COVID response and recovery to trying to tackle race equity issues, trying to work towards this climate crisis and really put our best foot forward in, in putting in place programs and projects and initiatives, um, making housing more affordable. One of the key issues facing, I think, many communities. I was with a group of uh, Hill Hilltown leaders from Western Mass also talking about affordable housing. The character of the community might look different, but affordable housing is a challenge in so many places from seniors to young adults to working families, and then also working hard to strengthen our public schools. As mayor, I also chaired the Salem School Committee. I think kids have been some of our biggest victims during this pandemic. They're going to need our best efforts to come through this, educators, children, schools working together. There's no doubt that what we do locally has a big impact on the Commonwealth. And frankly, how the Commonwealth works with cities and towns has a big impact on what happens locally. It's a symbiotic relationship. I know and understand the challenges that our communities face. It's a language I speak and one that I love. I'm enthusiastic about serving as Lieutenant Governor because I think we need to amplify and empower the work that's going on in our communities. When cities and towns are working, our Commonwealth does better. We're the places that the jobs are created. We're the places that are educating your children. Where are the places that are investing in those places you make memories, whether it's a park or a beach or a city square, and where are the place where neighborhoods are being kept safe? That's local government working in concert with state government. Right now, we have a lot at stake. I don't think we're going to be going backwards the way we used to do things. I don't think we're going to be doing things exactly the way they are now. It's still a little chaotic and probably not sustainable. As we head to that new phase, that next phase of this pandemic, we know we're going to need a strong state partner looking at programs uh, like pre-K, ways we can expand opportunities in our communities to make investments in children. Um, if Alabama, I don't know how many of you saw the Globe article about Alabama, every four-year-old has a high quality pre-K experience. If they can do it, we should be able to do it. I've expanded pre-K here in Salem. We're not serving all of our four-year-olds. If we have a, str a strong state partner, we can. Um, we know that we're gonna have work to do on transportation. Getting around our communities is becoming harder. We know that leads to greenhouse gas emissions. We've got to find ways to make those ability to get not only to and from Boston, which you can do in Salem pretty easily. We have a ferry service, we have a train service, but how to get around our own communities and the communities directly adjacent. We started programs like Salem Skipper 
paid for with cannabis revenues. It's an on it's an on demand rideshare service that allows people at a very affordable rate to get to those uh, hospital appointments, workplace, grocery shopping, the things that people need. The ideas exist, but having a, a really strong partner in the Commonwealth that can provide the technical assistance, the resources, help do the convening is really key to making our communities work. I hope to play that role as your next Lieutenant Governor. I'll, I'll close with this. Um, I had a, a group of Cub Scouts in my office last week and they said to me, Mayor, what do you like about this job? What do you like about being mayor? And my answer to them was because I get to work on issues that matter and make a real impact. That is what drives my values and enthusiasm for the work ahead as your next Lieutenant Governor, getting to work on issues that matter and make a real impact. We have an opportunity to make history in this Commonwealth. We can tackle some of the things that we've been kicking the can down the road on. We're going to have some resources. Maybe we don't have to have a scarcity mindset, but we're gonna to have to spend them wisely. We're gonna to need to make sure they impact every corner of this Commonwealth, and we're gonna to need to operationalize plans. Mayors do that. I'd be honored to do that as your next Lieutenant Governor. I'm excited about this opportunity to take this know-how, this experience, this sense of urgency from the get stuff done wing of government. There's no hiding in a job like mine. It's direct accountability. And I think that's a key to success, bringing people together, solving problems. Um, that's what, um, that's the skill set I bring. That's the work I hope to do. I'm grateful to be with you uh, this evening. I'd love your support in this race, running in one city and running statewide. We're really enthusiastic, but we're gonna need a lot of help and a lot of hands. And uh, uh, I hope that I can count you among them. Um, and with, I'll just close with, um, we have a chance to make history, not only putting one woman, but two women in the corner office. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work. And I would love to have your support along the way. Thanks so much for everything you're doing. Thank you very much for, for uh, meeting with us um, today, tonight, Mayor Durisco. We wish you the best of luck. And um, your campaign manager has already reached out to us for a longer uh, talk and Q&A, and we look forward to seeing you then. Next candidate is Eric Lesser, a candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Hi, Kathleen, and hello, Braintree. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Good luck with your virtual caucus. Uh, I know you got a big agenda ahead, so I'll, I'll try to just be brief. Just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Eric Lesser, and I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. I'm a state senator from Longmeadow from the Metro Springfield area. I represent two cities, uh, Springfield and Chicopee, as well as seven towns uh, up and down the Connecticut River and along. Uh, the Mass Pike. And I just want to quickly introduce myself and hope for your consideration as you uh, run for delegate and as you get ready for the convention in June. I believe I've got the experience uh, and the record to be a real partner to our next governor and make sure she's the most successful governor in the entire country. At the height of the COVID pandemic uh, back in 2020, when businesses were shuttered and our small businesses were being crushed, I led the effort to get a $600 million state level uh, rescue program out the door for our smallest businesses. We helped save hundreds of bodegas, nail salons, barbershops, community restaurants, dry cleaners when they needed it most. At the height of the opioid pandemic, which I know hurt Braintree and our communities all across our state so much, uh, I helped lead the effort to set up a Narcan bulk purchasing program to bring the price of Narcan down by more than two thirds. We got Narcan into the hands of hundreds of police officers, first responders, school nurses, athletic directors across our state. And uh, <clears throat> that has been a life or death issue. For those of you who might not be familiar, Narcan reverses an overdose when somebody arrives on the scene. And as our communities have faced escalating hate and hate crimes and violence against our Asian communities, our Jewish communities, our African-American communities, LGBTQ communities, and on. I set up a nonprofit security grant program that helped get millions of dollars out the door to community organizations that are at the greatest risk of domestic terrorism and hate violence. Wish we didn't need something like that, uh, but in this day and age, unfortunately, it's been necessary. Uh, and I'm gonna work uh, over uh, as Lieutenant Governor to invest in our rail system, to connect our state by rail, to improve and to beef up the MBTA and to build more housing. 
We know we desperately need more housing and we're gonna do it in a sustainable way around transit so that we can meet our climate goals along the way. I know I'm probably out of time, but I just wanna add a quick note about the governor's council, which is actually the only very clear constitutional role of the Lieutenant governor to chair the governor's council. A lot of people ask, well, what's the governor's council? Oh, the governor's council are the elected body that, that confirms all of our judges uh, that are nominated by the governor from Supreme Court down to trial court. I will prioritize criminal justice uh, uh, advocates in our judges, and I will also prioritize diversity. We need more gender diversity. We need more racial diversity. We need more geographic diversity and diversity of experience. I wanna see more public defenders and public interest lawyers on the bench as well. I worked for four years for President Obama before I was in the state Senate and I worked on two Supreme Court nominations for Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor. So I'm ready to get to work on making sure we've got the best possible judges uh, serving in our state. I hope you'll give me some consideration and I'll uh, turn it back over to you, Kathleen. Hopefully that was under time. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. You, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we hope that you will be able to join us on another day where we can have a, a more extended Q&A and uh, get to know you a little better. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. So our, our next candidate is Adam Hines, uh, candidate for, elect, uh, for Lieutenant Governor. Thanks, Kathy, and uh, and hi everyone. Thanks for all you're doing for the party. The fact that you're uh, taking the time out of your Wednesday night to do this um, really, really is uh, important. I think at this moment uh, more than ever. Um, you know, I, I, one of the reasons I'm in the race now is, is I'm I'm convinced that this is one of those times in history when you're presented with an opportunity collectively, uh, a rare moment to take a generational step towards equity and progress. It's what has me in the race, um, and, and it's my sense that this moment calls for leaders who are not afraid to take on the big issues, uh, folks with a background of bringing people together. I spent nearly 10 years in the Middle East doing exactly that, working for the United Nations. I was involved in negotiations in Iraq and Jerusalem and Syria. Um, and I got to tell you, um, nothing prepares you for standing up for your region in the Senate, uh, the state Senate, or, or leading on tough issues as a lieutenant governor, quite like holding your ground when you're drafting exchanges in a ceasefire negotiation with the foreign minister of Syria at a moment when they're attacking their own citizens. Um, but I always wanted to get back home, um, back in Pittsfield, the, the region I grew up in, take on the big issues here. And uh, so I took a leap and, and moved to Pittsfield and, and started a program for high-risk youth getting involved in violence. I was then pulled to lead a second nonprofit related to mental health and job creation. Um, and I got to say that that really meant the world to me. Um, I got to see, or you know, I saw that I didn't get to it. it was, it's not a positive thing. Um, I saw firsthand how our shifting economy was impacting families, including my own. My dad left a, a tool manufacturing company at the age of 50 to go back to school, essentially his own retraining program, um, and became a teacher and retired recently as a, uh, you know, a coach and a proud MTA member. Um, and I've got to say, it's, it's this glimpse into everything that's wrong with our economy, the fact that you have so many people uh, on the verge of economic disaster, as, as was highlighted during COVID, um, because of decades of wage stagnation and stifled mobility and high housing costs and childcare costs. It doesn't matter anymore how hard you work, how many hours in a day, you can still be close to the edge and it's just not right. Um, I've drawn on all these experiences and, and, and brought the same problem solving approach with me to the Senate. I'm in my third term uh, and, and currently leading our work to reimagine Massachusetts post pandemic. Putting aside for a second, I don't know when we're going to be post-pandemic, but um, and, and I've taken the lead on a number of, of uh, transportation initiatives, like creating a new train service from Pittsfield to Manhattan, a regional uh, economic center for us, uh, leading to ensure that all new new vehicles purchased after 2030 are um, electric uh, with rebates to so lower the cost. Um, been doing a lot of work on, on natural carbon sequestration in our trees. Um, I, have the, I represent the biggest district in the Commonwealth, uh, and I assume I have the most trees as well. Um, and then done a lot of work on our schools, and including uh, creating a new line item in our budget so that um, schools like many in my district that are, are losing um, students don't get short change as a result. Um, I currently represent more municipalities than anyone in this race, and, and um, really more than anyone in, in the Commonwealth apart, apart from uh, current statewide 
uh, office holders. And that, that link with municipalities is often identified as a strong and important role of Lieutenant Governor. Um, and so I, I did the work with numerous mayors, 52 city councilors and select or city councils and select boards and 25 school districts. Um, and I'll ensure that every corner of the Commonwealth recognizes that this is their moment and I'll be focused on raising up neighborhoods and communities across the Commonwealth. Um, I'll, I'll close with this. I became a, a father uh, eight months ago um, I, I'd rather be in person with all of you, but I do love that I could put my son to sleep and then come over and, and Zoom with you. Um, and, and, you know, I, like many of you know, it's, it changes your, your outlook on this work and this fight. And, you know, for example, we're confronting climate change with the urgency of now, but also so that my son and his generation can merely exist, um, working so that this generation can experience social and racial justice differently. In fact, my son is a part of the migration story. My wife, Alicia, is Mexican-American, and her grandfather came to this country and drove trucks his entire life so that um, my wife and, and her, the rest of her family could find opportunity. And she's now a college professor and just knocks it out of the park every single day. Um, yet that type of intergenerational mobility is almost unheard of today according to the data. Um, and that's something that has me in this race too. Make sure we're restoring that sense of opportunity to absolutely everyone in Massachusetts. Um, I don't think we can afford business as usual. We do need to, to have bold leadership. Um, I'd like to reimagine the role of Lieutenant Governor and uh, looking forward to working with all of you to, to get this done. Um, my team created a fancy little QR code that you can scan with your phone um, to link up for more information. I'll put some uh, information in the chat as well, but I'm uh, looking forward to earning your support um, tonight and uh, at the convention. And so thanks for a few minutes of your time. Thank you so much. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Is Brett Barrow, a candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you very much for having me tonight. And uh, let me preface my remarks by saying, as you have watched the candidates coming out, I hope you feel as I do, that the breadth and depth of those candidates is very impressive and the future of the Democratic Party looks strong. My name is Brett Bureau and I'm running for Lieutenant Governor and I'm running for a reason. As Massachusetts begins to emerge from the third wave of COVID, we're at an inflection point. The decisions we make during the next administration will define the character of the Commonwealth for our next generation. And although we have many challenges, I also think we have many opportunities in front of us, but it's gonna take a team to get it done and get the policies that we want in place. I believe that the experience and skills of a Lieutenant Governor should complement rather than duplicate those of the governor and the rest of the ticket. My background is distinctly different from the other candidates, and it comes from having spent time in the front lines addressing many of the critical issues to Massachusetts. As a small business owner for over 20 years in Orange, Massachusetts, I know how hard it is for small businesses, which represent 45% of our workforce, to survive, much less thrive in this state. And I recognize how little help that those small businesses get from the state. Yet if we want to have economic revitalization in our forgotten towns and our gateway cities, that needs to come from the small businesses founded by the people that already live in those communities. I served on the board of the largest environmental testing company in North America. So I know that responsible environmental actions don't come from legislation and regulation, although that is needed. It comes from testing and monitoring performance and holding those companies and frankly, our political leaders accountable for climate change. In the short term, transportation is the major source of climate change in Massachusetts. So we need to move to mass transit, not only the train system in Eastern Massachusetts, but regional transportation systems throughout the state. And in the long term, we need to address the climate change by seizing the opportunity that Massachusetts has to be a leader in the renewable and alternative energy space, utilizing the offshore wind capability, as well as the intellectual horsepower of our state. As the son of first generation college students with a wife who's an occupational therapist in one of the Metro West school districts, and as a member of the faculty at Babson College, 
I know that education is the path to a better station in life. And yet right now we're having a massive brain drain from our schools. Teachers are burned out as are our medical professionals from dealing with COVID. And we need to make teaching more than just a calling. We, made, we need to make it a profession where we compensate them for the value that they provide because our workforce depends on an educated, work, uh, uh, an educated workforce. And we need to keep our schools open, but safe for both the students and the teachers. As somebody who has served not at the highest level of governments, but at the lowest level of governments, serving on the finance committee of the town of Carlisle, I know that most of our citizens get their local services from local town government and not from the state government. And we need to focus on working with our towns and cities to make our change happen. My parents, my kids, and my grandparents, sorry, and my grandkids all live in Massachusetts. And so there is a generational divide opening up throughout Massachusetts. Our super seniors need help with housing costs so that they don't have to move out of state. And our young families need access to affordable housing as well as quality and affordable daycare. So there's much more we need to do in that area. And finally, as somebody who's dealt with both COVID and cancer personally in 2021, I know that healthcare should be a basic human right available to all. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor because I believe that this election is about building the foundation for our new future. And that only will come if we have a balanced team with diverse experiences to be able to implement the programs that are critical to our future. My name's Brett Bureau. I would appreciate your support at this convention, at, the, at this caucus, at the convention, and through to the election. And thank you very much for having me on today. I very much appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And we wish you the best of luck. Our final candidate today will be uh, Tammy Guvea, who is running for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Thank you everybody who's here for sticking through uh, a late evening. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity to share with you why I'm running for Lieutenant Governor. I'm State Representative Tammy Govea, and I'm running for Lieutenant Governor to put the health, the well-being, and the dignity of every single resident at the heart of decision-making. And I believe that in a state that is as rich in resources and culture and history like we are here in Massachusetts, there's no reason why any individual or any community or part of the state should be left behind. I grew up in the city of Lowell. My grandfather was in the Carpenters Union. Uh, that really put my family on solid economic footing. Uh, I feel very grateful and lucky for that. It allowed my parents to buy a two-family home they rented out the upstairs apartment to stretch their wages. Um, and sometimes we had some economic struggles if the economy wasn't doing so well, uh, but that certainly wasn't the case for far too many of my neighbors and my classmates who really struggled. Um, some of them, their parents uh, experienced intergenerational poverty, didn't have heat or hot water in the winter time. Uh, some experienced medical racism, suffering for years in bed with diabetes as a black woman. I'm 47 years old. I share that just so that you have an understanding that I was coming of age when Lowell became a resettlement location for families fleeing the genocide and the violence of the Khmer Rouge. And so while these experiences weren't my own, they definitely instilled a deep sense of empathy in me and a desire to give back to my community. And that's why I became a public health social worker. It's what I've been doing for the last 25 years. In 2007, I noticed that uh, Lowell did not have a substance abuse prevention coalition, but all of the surrounding suburbs did. So I approached the city manager and the superintendent of police and I said, hey, there's millions of dollars in federal and state grants that we could qualify for. We just need to get together, roll up our sleeves and start to do the work of working together so that we can get those dollars. And within a year of forming that coalition, that's exactly what we did. We secured a million dollars in federal and state grants. I went on to chair that coalition for five years. It continues to exist, sadly, because 
We know that the opioid crisis has actually gotten so much worse since 2007, and it hasn't got, gotten abated. It wasn't long after forming that coalition that I became a single parent to my kids who were six and three at the time. They're 20 and 17. They're faring as well as most of our, most kids uh, those ages. Um, but when I first became a single parent and up until even just a few years ago, really struggled financially. Um, you know, stole from Peter to pay Paul, was underinsured, so really carried some medical debt, uh, really had to figure out how to stretch my $60 and my grocery budget. I got laid off after the 2008 recession, so a lot of the first time experiences of facing unemployment that so many families have facing now because of the COVID crisis, I've been through that. Um, I moved to Acton as part of my story, as part of becoming a single parent. It was a really good place for us to land. And three years ago, I became the state representative for the area, representing Concord, Carlisle, Acton, and Chumsford. And I've been incredibly proud to represent this district and proud of the record that I have uh, achieved as a state representative over the last three years, passing legislation to green our transportation system and make it more reliable and, and uh, more affordable for our working families, passing bold climate policies and the next gen climate bill that was signed into law last year. Now I'm running for Lieutenant Governor as a doctor of public health, a single parent and a legislator. And I got in this race back in June before we even knew what Baker and Plato were doing because it was really important to me that I had the opportunity to crisscross the state and hear from everyday people. What are the issues that are top of mind for you? What keeps you up at night? And what are your ideas for solving some of the most complex problems that we're facing? So I'm running for Lieutenant Governor to put the health, the well-being, and the dignity of every single resident at the heart of decision-making to adjust and address and make sure that our COVID response and recovery is equitable and just, that we are investing not only in affordable housing, but that it is humane, that we are investing in early child care and, child, and early education, as well as education all across the board, and making sure that we are doing all that we can to center the all residents, particularly our low income residents and our residents of color in our climate response. We invite you to join our historic campaign. Uh, this will be the first time that a doctor of public health will be in the corner office, a single parent, uh, two women out of the corner office. No state have, has ever broken that barrier. So we invite you to join us. We'll put some information in the chat. I invite you to caucus for us and to be with us uh, through the election September and November. And I thank you all for everything that you do uh, to support your community and to support the Democratic Party and our democratic values. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.